Hey folks, how's it going? So this is Jay, and this is Bobby. Hey Bobby. Okay, uh, all right, um, he's going away. So he's my dog, um, he's like 14 years old. He's a very old dog, Yorkshire. Um, we rescued him from um, kind of a mistreated house before. And so we have him here and I uh, love him very much. Now today we're gonna be talking about the Microzoto um, tube preamplifier and well it's an all-in-one kind of integrated but we're gonna talk about that and it's sitting right there and we'll talk about that in a minute but before we do uh, I wanted to kind of touch a base upon this VPN software that I've been using now they are sponsoring this video and their name is surf shark and um, I've been using their VPN software uh, program and service for a while now and what they do is basically you're able to watch, for example, Netflix or um, country restricted uh, stuff. So for example, if you can't watch UK or USA content in Canada, you can now by using the VPN software. So for example, I've been using uh, Netflix USA and Netflix USA has around 10,000 or more shows than Canada. So this means that now you can watch a lot more shows so I can have access to a lot more shows that I can watch. And this really allows me to kill my time because I've watched practically every show on Netflix in Canada that I'm interested in. So now I'm able to watch um, you know, stuff like Family Guy or even uh, Black Swan, um, Rock 30 and stuff like that that's only available in the United States. So that's what the VPN is known for. Now obviously this applies to games, um, <laughs> um, it applies to games. He's back. He's back. <laughs> he likes it. It's like grass. He, he likes it because it's like grass. But um, yeah, so you can access like stuff like games that's not uh, you know available in your country. Um, music streaming uh, that's not available in your country as well. And that's very beneficial. And so they, they are sponsoring this video. This means that using the code um, I think the code they gave me here is MBT Studio, um, and you're able to get 84% off, which is the best price they can give to anyone, uh, and one extra month free by using my promo code in the link description below. So make sure to check that out. Um, it's very beneficial. Now today we're talking about the uh, Micro Zoto preamplifier, as you can see here. Now this comes in two pieces, okay? Uh, first thing I wanna talk about. It comes with a power supply, it's a linear power supply. And here we have the actual unit. And it, it is connected by this uh, little XLR or um, umbilical, okay? And so your power cord goes into this guy and then uh, the umbilical uh, powers the actual unit. Now this is a very uh, unique and neat design uh, because it doesn't have a transformer. Now this is a not a hybrid. I've seen some reviewers and some people call it a hybrid. It is not a hybrid. It's a true tube amplifier. It just doesn't have an output transformer. So how does that work exactly? How does that all work out? Because output transformers are essential when it comes to you know tube amplifiers. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because when it, when it comes to tube amplifiers, you need to be able to match the impedance of the high impedance of the tube to the low impedance of the speaker, okay? And so you need to be able to do that and that's done with the transformer. Now the ratio, the turns ratio is usually 25 to one, okay? But sometimes it requires higher, higher than that and much higher than that in a lot of cases. Now, what, he, what you, we have here is not an inferior design, it's actually a superior design in some ways, is the Zoro technology, okay? It's a Zoro technology. And what that means is it's, it's, it's Z-O-T-L basically, okay? And what O-T-L is, um, O-T-L is a, a type of tube amplifiers that doesn't have a transformer. It's called output transformerless, okay? That's what it stands for, O-T-L. And those ones have um, their own problems because there's a lot of compromises, okay? Sometimes it doesn't even match the impedance or doesn't even get close to the matching the impedance of the speaker per se, 
Hey, Bobby. Hey, Bob. Daddy, Daddy's talking here. That he wants to go outside. Bobby, stop. Okay. I may have to part, cut this part out. So back to the OTL design. So OTL designs means that sometimes you have to make compromises and those compromises sometimes lead to something significant as like something like, you know, too much negative feedback. Okay. And I've seen some OTL sound, uh, OTL designed amplifiers sound very good. And it's a lot of people's DIY favorites because you don't need to uh, have an output transformer, which can cost quite a bit. Now output transformers themselves cause a significant amount of problems when it comes to tube amplifiers. It's not all, you know, happy, dopey, you know, just use a output transformer and all tube amplifiers and we're happy. Uh, it's not like that. They have their own compromises and own, uh, you know, um, type of problems. Now here comes the Zoto and they call this the next, you know, <laughs> the next best thing uh, when it comes to tube design since the 1960s. This is the only innovation uh, since the 1960s or 1950s when it comes to tube designs uh, or that's what they say. Now, David Burning um, is the guy who made this tube amplifier and is behind the Zoto design. He's been designing tube amplifier for 20 years and he's a very respected engineer in our industry, okay? And he designed this. Now, what this does is something that no other tube amplifier or, or OTL designed, um, you know, transformer-less uh, uh, designed tube amplifiers do. So what happens is, okay, so the, I'm gonna explain to you what happens, okay? So the audio signal comes in, okay, and it rides a carrier fre frequency on which they are amplified by the tubes, okay? They're amplified by the tubes. Then the carrier is removed by the impedance converters. And the remaining audio is delivered to the speakers. So it's, it works very similar to how a radio station and receiver work, okay? And so by doing this, what they can achieve is quite significant. They're able to match the impedance of the, um, of the tube amplifier to the speakers in a ratio that was never been done in an OTL design before. So let's say, you know, the OTL design, I believe the maximum is like what, 25 to one in a lot of cases. But in a lot of cases, you require more than that. You require 100 to one or even 300 to one ratios. On the micro Zoto here, Bobby, come on, come on, behave, behave. This is what happens when you're inside the house with your dog 24-7. Uh, um, now here you have a micro Zoto design and this is able to match the impedance 300 to one, no problem, by doing the thing that I just said, okay? And so that means that this tube amplifier makes less compromises than other tube amplifiers, okay? Now, that's why it doesn't have a transformer. And that's a long-winded version of explaining why it doesn't have a transformer, but you could have easily skipped this part if you were not you know, into technical stuff. Now, getting to the fun stuff, okay? Now, here in the back, if I go to the back here, which I'll lit up, okay, you have two outputs, and then you have three inputs. One, two, three, very simple. And then you have speaker binding posts, okay? And so that's what you have. So this is an integrated amplifier. And so obviously it works as a pre-amplifier. Okay, now turn it on. Okay, and it goes LTA tube warm up. Okay. Now a funny story with this is it says warm up. Okay, oh sorry, warming. But my girlfriend uh, read this as warning. Not warming, but warning. So when she, uh, when I was at work, she was using this um, as a headphone amplifier and playing games and stuff. And she uh, immediately called me and she said, oh my God, the, the tube amplifier says warning. And I thought to myself, oh my God, okay, so turn it off, uh, you know, take out the power cord, don't use it until I get to the house. And surely enough, I later found out it said warming, not warning. So that was a little funny story there. But basically um, it works as a pre-amplifier. So you have an output, um, so for example, right now I have from the Hegel H190, okay, I have the output, okay, fixed output going in to the um, input of, of the micro Zoro preamplifier section. And then it's going output to the first watt uh, F7 that I have here in for review, okay? And so this is working as a preamplifier right now. 
And that's how I've been using it on my, in my system for a while. Now, here you have a switch that says speaker preamplifier and then headphone. Okay, so if I do headphone, that means that I'm using the headphone section and this is no longer a preamplifier. Now, if I do a speaker preamplifier, that means now I'm using um, as a preamplifier. Okay, and it's all tube. Now, really cool display here gives me volumes. And here that click. If Bobby won't whine for a little bit, excuse me, excuse me, little boy. He's an old dog, but he's still energetic. Stop it, stop it. Okay, I have an audience, please. Okay, so here uh, we have uh, a very nice volume. Like, that is so satisfying. Okay, now the only caveat that I can find with this preamplifier is that it doesn't come with a remote. So I have to actually go up and physically change the volume, which sucks. Um, but other than that, it sounds incredible. And you can change the input one, two, three um, with this dip here, okay? And it, it remembers the volume that you were at in those inputs. Now, um, that's how it works as a preamplifier. And it sounds freaking amazing as a preamplifier. I have nothing bad to say about this as a preamplifier. In fact, um, here's the problem with two preamplifiers, okay? They sound warm, but they don't have enough detail sometimes. They don't have enough uh, resolution. I wouldn't say detail, there's detail, but there's no resolution. It's not clear enough in the top end. The mid-range, sure, it sounds warm and luscious and it's great, but sometimes it does, just doesn't have that sweetness in the top end. This does. This, um, as you guys know, I, I, I've heard very high-end two preamplifiers and I work with them um, on a daily basis sometimes. Well, not right now because of the whole coronavirus bullshit, but um, you know, it, will, it shall pass and I'll be back to it. But this makes me not miss a single damn thing about those preamplifiers. Th this in fact, uses really high quality parts that you would only find in um, high end, uh, you know, amplifiers in like in a $10,000 range. But this is well below that. I believe this is like $3,700, which is still pricey and not affordable, or not really affordable for a lot of the people out there. I understand that. But the, for the price that's given, this is actually kind of ridiculous in terms of, per, of its performance. Now running it with the first watt, okay, which is a class A design, which I will do a separate inter, uh, interview or review of the um, unit. Um, running it with the Bacard S400, I get pinpoint imaging right down the middle, okay? This vivid voice and the gut of the uh, singer's voice. And I hear um, great separation with, and that warmth in the mid range. It doesn't sound, uh, you know, solid steady. It doesn't sound, um, you know, it sounds even softer than the Hegel, okay? It sounds even more natural than the Hegel. And uh, what you end up getting is really good mid-range, tube-like mid-range, warm, luscious, just the voice is floating in the middle, um, beautiful, no edge to it at all, very soft, very easy going, yet you have detail, you have high resolution, you have air in the top end, you have detail, there's nothing missing whatsoever about it. Now, the bass, is quite incredible. Of obviously with the Bacardi S400, um, I know the bass, bass very well, and the bass is quite um, amazing as well. Okay, the bass reproduction with this two preamplifier is quite amazing. And I know I'm talking about this two amplifier, not not that right now because um, I paired this up with all the amplifiers here, okay, and more. So I I made sure that I isolate and here the tube amplifier much as I can. And so I believe what I'm talking about is the tube amplifier, okay? So I just opened it up here just to show you guys. So here you see very premium parts being used and also the tubes are just not random tubes. It's actually uh, tubes from USA. I believe these are the US, um, J, uh, JN um, uh, um, RCA tubes. And these are um, as well made in USA tubes here. Um, Hand-picked, uh, all matched. And here we have the 12SX7. And then here we have the 12AT7, uh, the smaller tubes. Um, these are interchangeable um, with the 6SN7, 6 6 I believe, um, using the jumper settings. 
And if you want to use the um, 1280, 1280-7s um, and change it with the 12AU7s, you can do that as well. So many numbers, all these tubes. Um, and then here, um, moving on to the power supply of the things, this is the internal of the linear power supply that you'll be getting. So obviously you see the big um, oversized total transformer here, which is very nice. You see all the uh, little capacitors here as well. So now you come to the headphone section, okay? So let's switch to headphones. And I think I, brought, I forgot to brought, uh, bring down the headphones that I've been using, but I've been using the Sennheiser HD 600, HD 650, uh, most of the Sennheiser headphones, and Hyphaman Aria, um, Hyphaman uh, headphones, and I, I have quite a few of them. And if you know me, I've been reviewing headphones for a long time, so I have a, like a display rack um, that uh, you can see. And if you see some of my reviews, I'll link uh, some of my headphone reviews in the uh, link below. You can see you can see how many headphones I, I own. And I'm not here to boast, right? I'm just trying to uh, tell you that I, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to headphones. Uh, this is a state-of-the-art headphone amplifier. Um, it's a really good preamplifier, but it rocks ass as a headphone amplifier as well. So if you're like if you're a guy who wants a preamplifier, this is like state of the art as well. But when it comes to headphones, it, it knocks off a lot of shoes. It is delicate, it is vivid, it is sweet, um, it, it, is, it is powerful in the bass region. Um, it, it, it's just an incredible design for, for headphones. Okay, that's what I have to say. Uh, separation, sound stage, imaging, all that is state of the art. Uh, this goes hand, head to head with a lot of the total designs, um, you know, TOTL designs out there. Okay, so now talk, talking about the uh, headphone section. Not the headphone section, what am I talking about? Um, the speaker section, the speaker amp section. Because this has a speaker terminal, right? We saw in the back. Um, here, we'll show you, show you again. Okay, it has a speaker terminal post. Is it rated for anything? Nope, uh, it doesn't say eight ohms or anything like that, but it's, it, it has a speaker binding post. This um, puts out one watt. Yeah, I said it, 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 one watt, one, single. Now considering if your speakers are, um, you know, most speakers that are not really that hard to drive, are usually like 90 dB and below, right? Like Tecton's here, which is, you know, it has his back turned around. It's, um, it's, it's very efficient. Even the Focals are very efficient, it's like 92 dB or something like that. Um, by the way, review for the Elax are coming soon. Uh, so, so we have about 90 dB. Now, 90 dB in one meter, that's pretty loud. So I found that running with the amplifier, um, I found in a lot of cases one watt was enough, but it, it really wasn't for some, some of the speakers. For example, the Bacard S400 needs a lot more than one watt. Okay, mind you, this is a tube watt, but still, it needs a lot more than one watt to make it um, you know, boom and kick ass and party. But for low listening, um, even with the S400, it sounds quite darn amazing. Even uh, with the S400, low listening, it is one of the best options out there. Now for desktop use, one watt, and you're not even at one meter, so you can crank this thing up quite loud. So it'll make, it'll make your um, speaker sing. So if you have like a desktop speaker that is rated for like 90 dB in sensitivity, then that means that you can hook these up, uh, the amplifier one watt, and you have one quality watt. Now, the reason I paired it up with the first watt, and I think that's the best combination with this tube amplifier is because this guy, Okay, values the first watt. Okay, the first watt. One watt. And it's a one damn quality watt. And that's what they're going for. Same thing, first watt is in their name. Nelson Pass values his first watts. So, I paired it up and that seems to be a freaking darn good synergy. So that's why I really like the combination. And with the combination, okay, we're talking about 3,700 uh, that's about three grand or two grand. So you're talking about like seven grand altogether, okay, or a little bit less. And then with these speakers, uh, this 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 is the SC version. But if this is the standard version, then we're talking about about you know just under ten grand system.
okay? And that's not even accounting for the Halo H190, okay? But the combination between that and this, uh, th that preamplifier and the first watt is incredible. Just absolutely astonishing. I do not miss a high-end system at, at all. In fact, in a lot of ways, this combination syner synergistically uh, sounds incredible enough to blow those systems out of the water in a lot of the cases. So uh, one watt, 90 dB, search that up. So if you don't believe me that one watt is enough for a lot of the speakers out there, search up 90 dB, how loud is 90 dB, and you will understand that that's pretty much an enough volume in a lot of the cases. Now, um, is there anything I didn't cover? Okay, so well, let's talk, talk about the linear power supply for a little bit more. Okay, it's so in a tube cage here, but you can see kind of uh, the, the components here. You have the toroidal transformer. This is a linear power supply, um, has a lot of caps. It, it's a very quality uh, linear power supply, okay? If I could use this, let me tell you how good this is. If I could use this to, uh, you know, because the umbil umbilical cord is really for this, if I could use this for an, any other amplifier, I would. This is a very good power supply, okay? Um, here, uh, the tubes are sticking out for ventilation and all that. Um, this is a very nice design. Even the chassis, by the way, um, is damped, okay? It's not ringing, okay? Uh, and that's very important because the resonance control for a tube amplifier is essential and they know what they're doing. They didn't cheap out on the, uh, on the chassis either. The chassis is made by someone who is uh, very re uh, re reputable in the chassis making industry, I guess. And uh, they, 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 they did their research. They, they, they made sure the chassis is non-resonant and has um, good capability of damping and so that the chassis is high quality. And you can tell it's high quality, just look at the damn. That's amazing, okay. So that's what I have to tell you about the Zoto tube preamplifier, LTA. Uh, lo love it, just absolutely love it. Now, um, I think that pretty much covers it. Bobby is quiet now, my dog is quiet now. So I'm gonna have to do some more listening here. And I'm just telling you, uh, the, the two pre-amplifier with the first watt with the, uh, with the Bacard S400 kicks darn ass. Okay, so there you have it and I'll see you guys in the next one.